resolve specific issues. In a nutshell, the center provides suitable platforms wherein devs discussions are provoked, which in turn trigger fruitful debates on the acceleration of sustainable development across Africa. Let me emphasize here that the choice of ideas tabled for discussion are those which are believed to play a significant role in enhancing sustainable development, but never enjoyed or get adequate attention from implementing agencies. Currently, such ideas are very pertinent. Generally, such ideas are very pertinent, but they are either partially or not fully attended to because of the many competing issues that are supposed to be addressed every day by the various implementing agencies. Development and are aimed at all manifestos. And therefore, any long term commitment is either ignored or issues dealing with building resilience in social and economic space require long term investment in terms of time and resources. And this seems not to fit well in the language of many election manifestos. Dix distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me bring to your attention the theme of the conference, which underscores the three key words, every life matters. Those words are driven from 1948 Universal Declaration for Human Rights, which states among other things, that everyone has a right to a standard living and adequate for health and well-being of himself and his family. We choose the theme because health and well-being is human rights that each citizen is entitled to, irrespective of his or her ranking in the society. But what do the words every life matters really mean? According to me, it is about doing things responsibly, which with the human being at the center of it all. It is about advocating for high level of dedication and professionalism among all actors in the healthcare fraternity. And also it is about a moral obligation to avoid avoidable diseases and diseases. We need to understand the simple fact that even if dying is imminent, and may be unavoidable when it occurs, it should be explainable. Now it's time for us to critically look at the root causes for diseases and to urgently address the whole issue of accountability. To do this, we need to assess the entire healthcare system in order to determine the weak links establish the facts and reasons for success and failures, establish the root causes for failures, and also draw useful lessons and help avoid such negatives in failure undertakings. Therefore, the idea here is not apportioning blames to the various players in the entire system, such as the healthcare professionals, government leaders, etc rather to pinpoint the root causes of the system failure to enable remedial measures to be undertaken. In order to ensure the desired improvements of and corresponding accountability and to also counteract the inherent system failures and impunity, appropriate incentives need to be put in place. Systems that recognize and reward those who perform well but also hold accountable those responsible for failures. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me to briefly talk about the relevance of SDGs in Africa. While the 17 goals are global in nature and are therefore supposed to be implemented by all the nations worldwide, some are more critical for the African continent than elsewhere. For instance, the burden of health and the well-being of SDG 3 is more critical in Africa than in the developed 
world, and therefore, more has to be done here if the 2000 deadline is to be met. It is worth to mention that, given the importance of the health sector is the welfare, welfare of any nation, African governments have given significant attention in terms of resource allocations and other commitments. A quick assessment of the progress made in the past few decades, including the outcome of the MDGs, shows tangible improvements. Examples include to, in the area of child immunization, malaria control, combating HIV AIDS, and expanding healthcare coverage in terms of infrastructure and health personnel. Despite all these progresses, the African continent is still lagging far behind global average in virtually all health indicators. S citing a recent BBC documentary that was quoting the Lancet Medical Journal researchers compared Sub-Saharan Africa with the rest of the world using the, the case of surgery. It states that twice as many die in Africa after surgery, and yet those were mostly minor and less complicated surgical, sur surgical operations, such as during childbirth, and were also fewer, 20 times lower than the known demand. The researchers called the surgery-related deaths in Africa as a silent killer. Sadly, almost all those deaths could have been prevented. Thus portrayed depressing situation in a, in a reflection of weaker health system support, including interest, impunity, and lack of accountability at all levels. Coupled with the known problems of fear and ill-equipped medical staff, and short-sighted leadership in the field. Therefore, any plan to improve the health care system should tackle the problem of accountability into context. It is extremely sad the national and international institutions neither collect nor report on the number of negligence-related deaths in Africa, despite the widespread knowledge that many deaths are avoidable. It is unacceptable for Africa to continue to make excuses and accept the subpar health standard dysfunctions and avoidable deaths are to be expected as a way of life. critical for all actors situation that I just spoke out, there is a new hope for Africa in all sectors, including in the tech across Africa today. All business or financial services to health and education sectors making people better educated, healthier, and wealthier. Given the fast-moving technological revolution, Africa no longer need to follow the way the developed countries of the West went through, but can leapfrog over the old technologies and other outdated business models dating back to the industrial revolution of 18 centuries and quickly embrace the new and emerging technologies with ease, something which was unimaginable barely 15 years ago. A good example of leaf frog model of development suitable for the African environment is, to, is the MPC, the MPESA service that lets people send money through their mobile phones, rendering the need for a bank account. The mobile money service, which is spreading very fast across Africa and beyond, has brought down barriers to innovation, with apps being developed for such sectors like insurance, medical care, agriculture, energy, and etc. The emerging healthcare revolution and is embracing the use of the smartphone, which enables patients to know and control their own health situation and status with diminishing involvement of medical doctors who conventionally had control over all the patients' medical records and other principal advisors. The use of internet for consultation, where and when it suits patients is increasingly 
becoming the new norm. In other words, technology can now be used to give everyone everywhere affordable quality medical care, thereby creating everyone's own health services. The healthcare revolution to provide better and cheaper healthcare beginning of Africa, the beginning and Africa could following a suit. Just here in Rwanda, for example, last week I was reading an article in the New, York, in the New Times newspaper about the launch of a digital healthcare system, an artificially intelligent chatbot, a computer program designed to have a conversation with human beings over the internet for medical dialogues and consultation with doctors who are broad far away. The other well-known breakthrough in Rwanda is the use of unmanned air vehicles, popularly known as drones, which are used in the transportation of blood to cater for emergency cases in the remote areas. Thus, even with, without tarmac and paved roads, lives can be saved in remote places. This is indeed a revolution. With such developments where IT is making things easier and simpler, a patient will soon be his or her own doctor, better phrased as Dr. You, making medical doctors more advisors than counselors of One Health. To sum up, one can say that the emerging healthcare revolution is the new gatekeeper, or better phrased, the new sheriff in the neighborhood, whereby the ordinary citizens is in control of his or her health. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in order for the health in indicators to improve in a sustainable manner, countries, particularly those in sub-Saharan Africa, need strong institutions, good governance and accountability systems, which will enable the health system and service delivery to reach impactful, optimum, and efficient levels as set by the SDGs. Indeed, the way forward in Africa today is to do away with the conventional ways of isolated target interventions and adopt integrated approaches, which will take advantage of the SDG synergies and trade-offs as highlighted earlier. One may now ask the question, how can this be done? Given the multiplicity of challenges facing the African countries, ranging from poorly equipped health centers, few and poorly trained health personnel, and the stiff competition of for scarce resources within and across the sectors. The answer to this is the creation of an overarching accountability framework for health care. Such comprehensive framework should be one of the implemented, enforced, known, and understood by all citizens. The very citizens should be the ones that demand and then hold their governments. Healthcare providers and other sectors in the field responsibly for deliver equitable, safe, affordable, and quality health services. In sum, accountability must underpin the transformational change required in the healthcare system throughout Africa by 2030. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I approach to end my remarks, let me take the opportunity to highlight one of the pressing challenge to achieve the desired improvements in the health system in Africa and propose a way out the finance gap. There is a great need and urgency to establish the Health System Development Fund in Africa. As earlier mentioned, Although SDG 3 is a global goal, the depth and breadth of the challenge is uniquely African. The African health system requires significant resources to deliver, to deliver on its expectations. Past experiences show that the funding for health was mobilized successfully and managed at the global level. But this time around, there needs to be an intention and action towards African health system fund managed in Africa by African national governments should take a lead in making adequate budgetary provision for the health sector, create conducive environment for the private sector to participate, but there remains a need to mobilize global resources which can better done 
through a well-organized and governed health fund for Africa. This is therefore an opportunity moment for me to call upon all health stakeholders, but more specifically to African leaders, to throw their weight behind the need to establish this African Health Fund. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the two-day conference will have presentation and panel discussion from key resource persons. It will also have thematic group session to have effective and impactful discussions by allowing all participants an opportunity to engage. There will be three parallel group session with the following interrelated and overlapping teams. Building effective accountability framework to ensure optimal functioning of healthcare. Engagement efficient, two engagement efficient, strong and long lasting health accountability mechanisms to African nations. And three, establishing appropriate solution and other accountability mechanism to ensure proper functioning of the healthcare system in Africa. As you will agree with me, the conventional way of looking the human, human development as prerogative of the national governments and a few donors does not fit well in the era of SDGs. This is due to this fact that in, to this era, sustainable development is advocates vigorously and comprehensively so that no one left behind and therefore all players are important and are equally accountable. As you can see, virtually all stakeholders are represented here and we sincerely hope that all of, of you will continue very, contribute very positively to the discussions and impactful deliberations in the next two days. We are extremely thrilled and truly humbled that you responded positively to our invitation to come all the way to Rwanda in this beautiful city of Kigali. I want to take this opportunity to recognize the efforts of the different donors, partners, resource persons, and facilities from within Africa and outside Africa. We have committed their financial time and technical resources to make this conference a reality. Our partners from Rwanda, the Ministry of Health, and other government institutions, we appreciate your dedicated support towards the organization of this conference. On behalf of the center management and staff, I say thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Begashu, uh, for first uh, picturing where the Africa is in terms of health issues. Uh, you highlighted a lot of issues that Africa is facing, but I was glad to hear that as well you read uh, and really uh, spoke uh, about the opportunities as well that Africa has, uh, that if we really take advantage and explore, uh, that we can uh, curb the trend, as I mentioned when I started. Thank you so much, Dr. Begashu. Now, uh, allow me to invite our uh, next speaker, uh, Dr. Takao Toda. Please join me to welcome Dr. Toda, who is the, the Vice President for Human Security and Global Health, Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. Dr. Toda, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Berai, DG of SDG Center for Africa. Honorable Ambassador Gatete, Finance Minister. Uh, Honorable Health Minister, Dr. Gashimba, and Honorable Ministers and distinguished guests from all over the African continents, Mizu Yusuf from Dangote Foundation, academias, medias, and colleagues. Hawariza Asubuhi, Muara Mutsue. Good morning, and bonjour, bon dia, buenos dias, and ohayou gozaimasu. And uh, Before starting my speech, let me show my yellow necktie, which symbolizes uh, Happy Ladies' Day. Uh, let me pay due respect 
to the happiness of all the ladies in the world, including、uh, my two young daughters in Japan. Thank you very much for SG Centers for giving me this precious opportunity, as well as the government of Rwanda. And thank you so much for everybody to be here, deciding, spending your precious time here in Rwanda. Every life matters. Accountability in African health systems. What a beautiful word. I really want to congratulate the timely, the appropriate tema setting in this right place, Rwanda. SDG 3, needless to say, related to SDG 1, 2, 4, And five, gender. Eight, growth. And 17, for sub partnerships. All related. USC, SDG number 3.8, must be the core of all the SDG 17 goals. And the accountability is the core of USC. So, we are now discussing the core of the core. For the two days. And in the right place, in Rwanda. Most of you know much better than I what I mean by Umuganda or Imihigo, the traditional beauty of Rwanda, and harmonized with ICT. That is what we are witnessing in this current Rwanda, which is also found. In the far east of Japan, we expect African ownership would grow with the harmonization of tradition and modernization. In fact, I was here in Rwanda around 30 years ago when I was a little bit young, and I remarked、uh, astounding change of modernization of this country. With paying due respect to your African traditions, I'd like to give you big applause to the prosperity of this development. In this precious opportunity, let me very quickly try to eradicate the possible misunderstanding about UHC. There are at least three important misunderstandings. About USC. The first one USC is the specifically sector of health, health sector issue. No, it's wrong. USC is a nation building issue. As uh, uh, President of Senegal, k o l s e k Deputy President Ruto in Kenya, Mentioned rightly in the USC in Africa, TKAD 6. This is a nation building matter. That's the reason why Honorable Finance Minister Gatete is here, and I really appreciate your presence to show the commitment to your nation building by way of USC. The second misunderstanding this is very important. USC should not be the result of economic growth. But most of us have a tendency to understand this could be the result of growth. But this is wrong. Let me show you an example Japan. Japan achieved USC when we were poor, much, much more poor than the United States and European countries. In 1961, we achieved USC, and that contributed a lot to our equitable, high quality growth for the 30 decades.、And、that contributes to the income redistribution. More than 70% of income redistribution has been achieved by universal medical health insurance coverage. This is a fact that we need USG. 
before we start development. If we do it in a different way, you may imagine how difficult the poorest people in New York suffering without USC, without health coverage. What a sort of compartmentalization happening in Latin American countries, including Brazil and some other important countries. If you go for that way, it is okay. But if you really need growth with equity, let's go for USC before we start full-scale economic growth. The last misunderstanding. USC is about medical services and medical insurance. Right? No. Totally wrong. If you stick to the improvement of those systems, you would go for bankruptcy. Based on Japanese more or less lessons learned, 1974, we made a free medical service system for elderly people, which make Japanese government in a very difficult financial situations. Okay, by saying so, by eradicating three misunderstandings on USC, let me quickly anatomize the meaningfulness of accountability. Accountability by who to whom? The first and the most important accountability is the people's accountability to the people themselves. In case of Japan, we fully utilized Mura community system in addition to company system, differently from European systems such as Germany. We utilized community coverage system. That was the reason why we could achieve universal health coverage while we are poor. The second accountability, accountability by hospital doctors to the people. Japan made a fatal failure on this point. Japan introduced the input-based medical payment system, which accelerated the bankruptcy of Japanese medical system. You know the reason why. Doctors have lots of incentive to give patients lots of medicines, operations, without paying due consideration of the patient's health. So please do not follow that of mistakes. The third accountability, the government, country, to people. I would like to show you this notebook. This is, has been used in the Palestine territory and the similar one distributed in 1948 in Japan by the government to the royal family, to the poorest family, exactly the same mother and child health handbook. That shows the standpoint of the then Japanese government to be inclusive, to include the more marginalized people. Ladies and gentlemen, 70 years after Universal Declaration on Human Rights, 40 years after Armata, 30 years after Bamako, and around 20 years after MDGs, Still, we have a long way to go for achieving USG. Why? The goal is like a mirage. It is impossible for us to realize USG based on our more than 70 years efforts. What do you think of that? I'm not euphoristic about the answer. But I'm sure, I'm cautiously optimistic about African leadership with African accountability to make seemingly mirage to miracle. For that, I would like to expect everybody's commitment, everybody here, to commit to achieve USC. 
within a very short time framework. Fortunately, nowadays, we have ICT technologies. We can share very easily wisdom, lessons learned, success stories, and failures. In a second, in all over the world, SDGs Center for Africa, led by Dr. Berai Begashow, should be, I strongly expect, the knowledge center of global and African development toward complete UHC. We can achieve so, so long as we wish and act. Tukitaka Tunaweza Kufani Kiwa. Okay. Gushaka Niko Gushobora. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Asante Sana, Murakoze Chane, Domo Ariato Gozaimashita. Dr. Toda, thank you so much for delivering uh, good remarks and uh, sharing the Japan experience. Uh, I think it's true that uh, you don't wait for the development before you think about the UHC and uh, actually it's one of the tools that can fast the development of uh, a nation. Uh, guest of honor, allow me to Call our next speaker, Mrs. Zuela Yusufu, uh, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Dangote Foundation. Ms. Yusufu, welcome. Audience, please join me to welcome uh, Ms. Yusufu for her remarks. Honorable Ambassador Claver Gatete, Minister of Finance of the Republic of Rwanda. Honorable Dr. Diane Gashumba, Minister of Health of the Republic of Rwanda. Dr. Takao Toda, Vice President of Human Security and Global Health for JICA. All other African Ministers of Health here present. Dr. Bale Begashaw, uh, DG of the SDG Center here in Africa. Honorable members of government, honorable heads of diplomatic and consular missions, distinguished delegates from African states, distinguished international delegates, representatives of international organizations, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking to you today on behalf of my boss, Mr. Aliko Dangote, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today. Um, I run his foundation, which is primarily focused on health, and so this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. So it is an honor and so what I'm reading now is what he would have said had he been here. So take it as Adiko Dangote speaking, okay? All right. Um, it is an honor and distinct privilege for me to be here. I thank the, F the SDG Center for Africa Management and everyone who participated in one way or another in organizing this conference. I also take this opportunity to thank His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, and Chair of the SDG Center Africa Board for graciously hosting the SDG Center Africa here in Rwanda. The SDGs are all about social inclusion, environmental protection, economic growth. They are therefore everyone's business. Governments, civil society, academia, researchers, private sector, and the citizens. It is appreciated that there's a growing commitment to involve all parties in the search for solutions to Africa's development challenges. This diversity ensures that all perspectives are considered in crafting sustainable development strategies. However, governance and management of all these different perspectives call for an effective accountability framework. This conference theme, Building and Strengthening Accountability in African Health Systems, therefore resonates well with this inclusive thinking that policymakers, health professionals, investors in the health sector, patients and citizens in general, each player should understand their roles and responsibilities and deliver at their very best. We need to ensure that everyone's contributions are harnessed while risks and potential negative impacts 
are identified and mitigated. Since I come from a private sector background, allow me to say a few words about the role of the private sector in the development of Africa's health systems and the need for accountability. We all know that healthcare services are usually the responsibility of the government, from regulatory to provision of services. However, when it comes to services, the majority share sits with the private sector. By private sector health service, we mean anything but the government. So all other stakeholders besides the government. Governments should therefore set up the right regulatory frameworks and continue to mobilize resources internationally and domestically for health services. But they need to recognize the potential of the private sector, considering that they cover the health services for the majority of the populations. The private sector can contribute to improved health systems through investing in product development, i.e. pharmaceutical products, health insurance products, technology, hospitals, setting up food industries that provide nutritious foods, and even medical schools, etc. The private sector can bring in additional capacity, including appropriately trained medical personnel, more efficient operational systems, and better quality. Governments and other shareholders need to come up with innovative and appropriate financing models that work for the private sector in the face of a well-known fact that there is a gigantic financial gap to fund the African health system and that a significant size of the population cannot yet access necessary health services. The universal health coverage principle requires that all individuals and communities require uh, receive quality health services they need without suffering financial hardship. This may also require the elimination of user fees at the point of service to provide security for anyone wishing to access primary health care services. When people have to pay the cost of health services out of their own pockets, the poor are often unable to obtain the services they need. And even others may be exposed to financial hardship in the event of severe or long-term illness. Pooling funds from compulsory funding sources, such as mandatory insurance contributions, can spread the financial risk of illness across a population. The private sector and other stakeholders are keen to ensure that this universal health coverage is met. Coming back to the notion of accountability in the health system, government regulation processes need to be strong, efficient, and transparent with no corruption, on the other hand, holding accountable all health workers, including the private sector ones. The private sector should conduct their business responsibly with a conscious, with a conscious effort that doesn't allow provision for substandard services in the pursuit of profit. Before I end my remarks, allow me to congratulate Rwanda for setting up a compulsory community health insurance scheme, Mutuel de Santé. Although there are other public and private health insurance companies in the country, through Mutuel de Santé, all citizens can su subscribe to a community health insurance scheme, removing any barriers to access primary health services. All Rwandan citizens are categorized under specific wealth ranking groups. Those in the lowest category don't pay anything, while those in the upper categories contribute subscription fees accordingly. Rwanda passed a legislation that makes health insurance compulsory. This makes primary health services accessible to everyone, irrespective of their socio and economic status. I hope that this is a lesson. Uh, in this uh, endeavor and uh, accountability goes across, and as well, private practitioners, uh, private diplomatic missions, development partners present here today, our distinguished guests. A warm welcome to Rwanda. I would like to thank you, all of you, for traveling such long distance and respond to our invitation. I would like also to take this opportunity to thank the SDG Center for Africa for organizing to the Minister of Health these important ideas on how to avoid. Please. Happy International Women's Day to every beautiful lady who is sitting with you. But we have the vote of our government. We have more than 15% of the budget attributed to the health sector. This is a big support and we don't take this for granted. And I want this forum to discuss how government, how politicians, how all stakeholders can contribute to supporting 
actively the health sector from the community level up to the central level to make sure that we reduce unacceptable numbers of death that are happening in our countries. Inadequate care coordination is estimated to cause government millions of dollars loss through healthcare professional malpractice and uh, errors. We need to stop this. We need to act. We have data. We all have data from our archives, but how do we use this data? How do, do we use the data we have, the data we collect, to prevent causes of death? How do we use data to better plan and to better coordinate our work and integrate all the programs related to health for a better use, a proper use of resources we have, the little resources we have. I'm glad we will be discussing these important topics and we'll be learning from each other. In Rwanda, we've achieved a lot in uh, MDGs, but we still have a long way to go. We want to learn from all of you and we welcome all your ideas and input and we want to move as sisters and brothers, African countries toward SDGs achievement. I wish you pleasant discussions. I wish you a fruitful meeting. And I would like to end my note here by welcoming my colleague, Honorable Gatete, Pierre Craver, the Minister of uh, Finance, uh, and our guest of honor today to deliver his remark. And I want also to thank the team from the Minister of Health, RBC, the Minister of uh, Finance, and uh, all our partners for organizing this conference, for making sure that our guests are happy, our guests uh, are spending uh, nice days and a pleasant stay in Rwanda. We wish that we come, you come back very often and very soon in Rwanda. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Dr. Gashum, the Minister of Health, Honorable Ministers who have traveled a long distance from outside that are here present, Dr. Belai Begasha, uh, Director General for SDG Center for Africa, Dr. Takao Toda, Vice President for Human Security and Global Health, Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, uh, Mrs. Zora uh, Yusuf, CEO Dangote Group, uh, distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I want to add to the Minister of Health Statement to wish all the women here happy Women Day, and I encourage all the men as well to shake their hands. Thank you. It is my pleasure and distinct honor to welcome you all to Rwanda and to the opening of this important conference with the theme, Every Life Matters, Building and Strengthening Accountability in the Africa Health Systems. Allow me to express the Government of Rwanda's appreciation for the excellent work the SDG Center for Africa is doing in identifying and addressing key SDG-related issues in Africa and beyond. Specifically, I, would thank, I thank the SDG Center, the Rwanda Ministry of Health, together with other partners for organizing this very important conference. It is a huge task to bring this relevant in September in. And momentum, no doubt, the health-related SDGs requires strong partnerships among all stakeholders in Africa, including the private sector. There are many lessons to build on within the region and beyond where such partnerships are working. At the core of success in delivering strong health outcomes is the issue of accountability. This is especially so when accountability is demonstrated within health systems, among service providers, and most importantly, to the communities 
and beneficiaries. In Rwanda, the importance of accountability is enshrined in the governance framework, right from the highest political level. Policies and tools have been developed to ensure a performance and results-based culture is developed in all sectors, including health. This tool is commonly known as IMIHIGO, or performance contracts, and has been central to the transformation of the country post-genocide. We have not stopped at the establishment of policies and tools at the national or in institutional level, but rather further decentralization decentralized them to the villages and to individuals. This has empowered the communities to demand accountability conveniently. This has empowered the communities to demand, sorry, this has been reinforced with the practice of regular performance reviews and performance-based incentives. Undeniably, one of the homegrown solutions that have driven remarkable results in the health sector has been the use of the community health workers across the country at village level. These have enabled the provision of primary health care services at household level with significant results and child and infant mortality over the last two decades. This approach has, enshrined, has ensured proximity of services and reinforced accountability to the communities. The key lessons we, have, uh, we can take from uh, this is the need for a comprehensive system driven by results and accountability with the systems at the heart of everything. In spite of the progress realized, some challenges persist, especially on the quality of service delivery and mobilization of resources to achieve the health-related SDGs. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, given the near universal coverage of the population with basic services in Rwanda, much attention is shifting towards basic health services. Sorry, uh, much attention is shifting towards the need to improve the quality of services offered, including specialized treatment and the care across the country. With the improvements in the health outcomes and livelihoods, citizens are increasingly demanding better services and more accountability. Meeting their needs requires significant investments in human resources, equipment, infrastructure, and systems. We therefore need to, need to, come, to come up with strong strategies to mobilize sufficient resources to ensure adequate financing. Further investments are needed in strengthening accountability mechanisms by putting in place standards, qualified administrators, and financial managers, as well as information systems at the different levels of the health sector. For example, Rwanda is currently rolling out the Integrated Financial Management Information System, which we call here IFMIS, to all health centers which will ease monitoring and management of resources, including own revenues of health facilities and enhance accountability. Going forward, it is important to consider that technology can play an enhanced role in driving accountability. The world is increasingly moving towards a technologically driven digital economy with multiple opportunities and efficiencies arising from adoption of technologies such as drones, as has been said before, and the scale up of broadband. There are many areas to be explored in this regard, including the modernization of health systems to improve and scale up services delivery the digitization of health services, the delivery of health services in remote places, among others. Lastly, I urge participants in this meeting not to shy away from proposing bold and conventional solutions to dealing with health challenges. I encourage you to maximize the forum to share experiences from different countries, to learn lessons from each other, and to deliberate towards finding pragmatic and actionable resolutions to strengthen accountability while putting citizens we serve at the center. It is now my distinct honor to declare this conference officially open. I wish you fruitful deliberations and thank you for your kind attention.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, our guest of honor, uh, Ambassador Craver Gatete, uh, for delivering your opening remarks, but as well for your leadership into le making sure the finance as well uh, support uh, the health sector improvement, especially in the matters concerning the accountability and uh, health system strengthening. Thank you so much for our guest of honor and uh, distinguished speakers. We are close to the end of the opening session, and uh, I want to announce that after here, we're going to invite our high table, the guest of honor and the, the distinguished speakers who are with him, to move uh, outside together with the front, the front seat, uh, the people who are sitting in the front rows. So they will also accompany our guest of honor and the Honorable Ministers uh, for the group photo. Uh, I will kindly request the others from the second law to wait a little bit and give uh, uh, time and space for our guest of honor and uh, Honorable Ministers present and the people who are sitting on the first law to first step out. The ushers will show where the photo is going to be taken. So again, a big applause to our guest of one and the keynote speakers while they are stepping out for the group photo. Um, ushers, please help us to, to direct our guest of one and uh, keynote speakers. So we hope that uh, the first law is occupied by the session leaders uh, the country's delegates, uh, the moderators, if you are not sitting on the first floor and you are among those categories, you can as well move along with the others. Uh, so again also to, to announce that after this photo session, uh, our keynote speakers and guests of honor will come back for a short press conference. And at that time, all of us will be uh, enjoying our health break, as well continuing to wish the women's a happy day. And I just want to announce that I will not disappoint you and uh, continue to be in front here. I want to invite a young lady, uh, Noela Vigirimana. Noela, if you can really step forward who is going to peacefully take over from myself to be the MC, and uh, she will announce on how the next program is going to unfold. Please join me to welcome Noela Vigiriman, who is going to be our next MC for the next session. Noela, the front yours. Thank you. Thank you, P.S. So as the PS mentioned, my name is Noela Bigirimana, and I'm a strategic advisor at the Rwanda Biomedical Center uh, here. Um, so I guess as we wait uh, for a few minutes, I wanted to go over the rest of the program today. Um, so in a short, uh, in a very short while, we'll be taking um, a small break, a coffee break. Uh, and, and so right after that, uh, by 11.15, we want to be back here in the room a little bit before. And so today we are excited to continue to um, talk about these very important uh, topics and themes that have been uh, introduced by, um, by the honorable speakers this morning. So immediately after the break, we'll have Professor Jeffrey Sachs, who will be joining us via video conference. And uh, so he's a board member of the uh, SDG Center Africa and a special advisor. And after that message, uh, we will be going to a high-level panel discussion. So the high-level panel discussion this morning, the very first one, will be on in-country accountability mechanism to strengthen health systems. So speakers will be looking at the health system uh, components and looking specifically at uh, accountability mechanisms um, within each. 
and uh, after that we will have time for just a quick introduction of the afternoon program. Now, the afternoon program will be a little bit different. It won't be a panel discussion. There will be three tracks. So we'll have parallel thematic sessions that will take place in these uh, mezzanine rooms. In this mezzanine room, um, which is image three and four, we'll have the uh, Parathematic session one. And so that session one will be looking at building effective accountability framework to ensure optimal functioning of health systems. So it's basically a conversation that will be um, looking at a, team that, a theme that uh, define what appropriate mechanisms are there, oversight and accountability. So um, that's in MH3 and 4. MH2 will have parathematic session number two. And that one is the engender uh, efficient, strong, and long-lasting health accountability mechanisms in Africa, and specifically looking at data research and development. So, this, if you're interested in this, they'll be looking at uh, the, um, the way data research, development, and technology are supporting creation of resilient and accountable health systems across Africa, and so exploring the use of ICT. Um, and in MH1, which is the very first mezzanine room coming in, uh, there will be parallel thematic session number three. That thematic session number three will be looking at um, in, uh, establishing appropriate solutions and other accountability mechanism to ensure proper functioning of healthcare systems in Africa. If you're interested in that session, that session would be um, looking to identify solutions and strategies that drive enforcement of accountability. So. Um, we'll be also looking at recommendations in different ways. Mm. Perfect. So we are now, uh, I think we're now ready for a quick break. Um, so we'll take um, a short break. There's coffee and tea outside. We can also be a health break. Uh, we'll be back in this room uh, by il right before 11.15 to, to get started on the first panel and um, uh, yes, we look forward to having you back. <laughs>